Welcome mathematicians, I have another video for you in my series on the Laplace Transform. If you don't know what the Laplace Transform is, that's totally fine. Down in the description I have an entire playlist introducing the Laplace Transform. Give this video a like so that the YouTube algorithm starts promoting more math videos, which we should do in these challenging times, and let's get into the video. In this video, we're going to see how we can use the Laplace Transform to solve an initial value problem like this one. I have y double prime minus y minus 2y equal to 0, some ODE together with two initial conditions, y of zero is one and y prime of zero is equal to zero. The big idea of Laplace transforms is that we are going to apply the Laplace transform and turn this differential equation into an algebraic equation. The algebraic equation we're gonna be able to solve and then we can invert the process by taking the inverse Laplace transform and getting back to a solution to our original initial value problem. Let's see how to do that. So the method is going to be first to take the Laplace transform of both sides. So let me do that. I'm going to first take the Laplace transform of y double prime. I'm going to subtract off the Laplace transform of the y prime, and I'm going to subtract off twice the Laplace transform of just y. This is what it means to be linear, that I can say the Laplace transform of some linear combination is the linear combination of the Laplace transforms. On the right side, this is nothing but the Laplace transform of zero, which is indeed just going to be zero. To make our lives a little bit easier, I'm going to define the new notation that y of s is just going to be a stand-in for the Laplace transform of the function y of t that I began with. Okay, so now I need to figure out what is the Laplace transform of the first derivative, the second derivative, and so forth. But this is something we've computed actually in a previous video. So let's do the first one. Let's do the Laplace transform of y double prime here. The expression we had seen was that it was an s squared times y of s. And then it was going to subtract off an s times y of zero and then subtract off a y prime of zero. That is, it becomes s squared times this new variable y and then it had just two constants, y of zero and y prime of zero, just constants. We're going to solve for those with the initial condition. All right, next up, I need to subtract off the Laplace transform of the derivative. And the first derivative is a little bit simpler. It was s times y of s, and then I suggest subtract off by y of zero. Finally, I subtract off by two times just the Laplace transform of y, which we have defined to be just capital Y of s, and then the right-hand side is, once again, zero. Now I'm going to take those initial conditions the y of 0 equal to 1 and the y prime of 0 equal to 0 and just plug them in and let's just see what happens there. This is going to give me, well, s squared times y of s. y of 0 was 1, so I'm going to have a subtraction of an s. Then I subtract off just nothing, so minus a 0. Then I subtract off s times y of s. I then have another subtract off y of naught, but it's got two minus signs now. And as a result, it's going to give me a plus 1 and then a minus two times y of s, and all of this is equal to zero. Now, this equation that I have here is an equation in terms of the variables y and s, and I want to solve it so that y can be written as some function of s. The way I do this is I'm gonna to try to make y of s be on the left-hand side, so what's on the right-hand side, well, everything else, it looks like I got a, a minus s that's gonna move over and become a plus s, and then a plus one that's gonna move over and become a minus one. And then I'm going to divide out by the coefficients of y of s, which looks like an s squared, a minus s, and a minus 2. And, and so that is my answer. That is algebraically solving for y as a function of s. Now, I'm not done yet. I took this differential equation and I converted it via the Laplace transform to an algebraic equation. I solved that algebraic equation. But I don't yet have a solution to the original differential equation. So I have to undo the process somehow. I have to apply the inverse Laplace transform. So the question is, what is the inverse Laplace transform of this thing, of this s minus 1 over s squared minus s minus 2? So that's what we're going to turn to next. And the way we do this in general is to try to recognize these functions that we want to take the inverse Laplace transform of. Try to recognize them in terms of things that we already know in, in terms of expressions that we already know their inverse Laplace transform of. And the major algebraic trick I'm going to use to do that is partial fractions. So let me recall how that works. All right, so my first trick is just going to be to factor, and I see that in the denominator, 
I can write this as s minus 2 times s plus 1. Then the magic of partial fractions is that we aim to write this complicated rational expression as a single variable a over the first linear factor, which is s minus 2, and then a second b over the second linear factor, which is s plus 1. And then the way partial fractions worked was let's multiply both sides by the denominator here, this s minus 2 times s plus 1. And that's going to give me that on the left-hand side, when I multiply it by the denominator, I get s minus 1. And on the right-hand side, a times s plus 1 and b times s minus 2. There's several ways to proceed here, but the way I'm going to look at it is I'm going to do the coefficients of the 1. On the left-hand side, that's just going to be a minus 1. And on the right-hand side, their coefficient of 1 looks like an a and then a minus 2b. Then likewise, I'm going to compute the coefficients of s, which on the right-hand side looks like there's one s, and on the right-hand side there's an a times an s and a b times an s. So, so what I've done here by looking at the coefficients of 1 and the coefficients of s is to take this single equation and actually think of it as two separate equations, one in s and one in terms of 1. Well, we can solve these easily enough. If I look at the bottom expression, that's going to give you that a is 1 minus b. If I take that and plug it into the top expression, then this is going to give me that minus 1 is equal to 1 minus b minus 2b. So I have a minus 2 on the left if I move the 1 over, a minus 3, and so my b is 2 thirds. So b is 2 thirds, and if the a is 1 minus 2 thirds, then that's going to imply that the a is equal to 1 third. So I figured out what my a is, and I figured out what my b is. All right, so having done that partial fraction stuff, I'm going to come down here and take this expression of y of s, and I am now going to write it as 1 third over s minus 2 and 2 thirds over s plus 1. This is my rewriting of this expression. Okay, so let's move that up as well, and then we can study it. Well, my final goal was is to compute the inverse Laplace transform of this. But now I've finally written it in a way that I can understand. And the reason is because I know a Laplace transform that looks like this. In particular, I will recall for you the fact that the Laplace transform of something of the form e to the at, this was nothing but 1 over s minus a. And indeed, this y of s just looks like 1 over s minus a for two different values of a, 1 being minus 2 and 1 being plus 1. So my final real step is to take the inverse Laplace transform of this y of s. And indeed, uh, well, what was the y of s? So I'll, I'll, I'll copy the inverse transform again. But what was big y of s anyways? Well, it was the Laplace transform of the original y of t. So what I have is the inverse Laplace transform of the Laplace transform these cancel, and what I'm just going to be left with is the y of t. And then what actually is this? It is the inverse Laplace transform of the right-hand side, which is one-third times something that looks like an exponential, and two-thirds times something that looks like a different exponential. By linearity, what I get is the one-third first exponential, since it's s minus 2, is e to the 2t and then plus 2 thirds in the second exponential because it's s plus 1, I'm trying to look like things of the form s minus a, is therefore e to the minus t. So what I finally have is a solution to the original initial value problem, the differential equation together with the initial conditions. I'll leave it to you to check that if you take the derivatives and plug it in, that indeed this does work. So this example has hopefully illustrated to you why this method of Laplace transforms is so effective. By converting our original differential equation into an algebraic one that, that also included the initial condition data, we were able to solve that and invert back, and now we have a solution to our original differential equation.